Hello Salem, I'm your mayor Chuck Bennett. It's October and we have some great news and information for you from the city of Salem. There's a new round of COVID relief grants for local businesses. Help is available for small businesses, sole proprietorships, and nonprofits experiencing negative economic impacts due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A total of $238,000 in funding is available and grants of up to $25,000 will be considered. Use the web address on the screen for more information in English and in Spanish. Also, we're very proud of Salem residents and organizations who immediately responded to neighbors in need during the September Sandy M. Canyon wildfires. The city responded by deploying resources and staff to help. Firefighters went on the front lines to battle the fires. Police officers were deployed to patrol the canyon communities to protect properties. Public works staff delivered water to evacuees. Our partner organizations also were quick to respond and serve residents in need. While we had many people asking questions about our water treatment plant, which is in the canyon, we're fortunate the fire didn't come too close to that facility. And to talk more about this, I have Public Works Director Peter Fernandez today, who will give us some insight on our water supply. Well, again, thank you, uh, Mr. Fernandez, for joining us. Uh, I think the biggest question I've heard from the wildfires uh, and the quickest question was what's it doing to the city water and what are you doing to make sure uh, I'm not going to be harmed by the uh, impact of those wildfires. Certainly, Mayor. I'm delighted to be back here with you. Uh, I want to first and foremost say that our water is safe, safe right. to drink as always. Our uh, plant uh, was spared any damage. Uh, it was close. The fires got to Mahama and then a magical force stopped the fires for us. And How close, them, how close was about it? About eight miles. About eight miles. About eight okay. miles. The, 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 uh, the fire, the smoke was thick. Uh, there was lots of ash, but none of it affected the plant and none of it affected the quality of the water. Remember that, that all that smoke, all that ash is on the outside of the filter, so our water still goes through the filtration system okay. before it is delivered. So there was no, no impact to the, to the quality of the finished drinking water. So some of your staff was there as the fire moved toward them? Our staff was there the whole time. Uh, in fact, uh, we usually are not out there 24 hours a day, uh, but we had people on fire watch overnight to make sure that uh, there were no problems. Uh, we took extraordinary care with the safety of our staff, but we wanted to make sure that we addressed issues as they flared up. Well, I hope, you'll, I hope you on behalf of the community thank them for, for that extra effort because it's, it, as you know, certainly one of the biggest concerns we have. What are the long-term implications for our water supply from the wildfire? I, I'm thinking of there's burn buildings, there's uh, certainly chemi household chemicals, if nothing else, in some of those homes. There's uh, uh, any house that burns, there's a lot left over, plus Ash plus what else? Certainly. So, so we uh, we estimate that about half of our watershed uh, was impacted wow. uh, by the burn. Uh, first and foremost, our concern is uh, uh, ash uh, flowing into the water, creating turbidity for us. Right. Uh, we are fully prepared to handle the turbidity. Uh, then we're also concerned about the possibility of hazardous waste. We all know what we keep in our garages, what we keep right. in our basements. A lot of these things burned and are now embedded uh, in the ground. I think uh, the EPA will be out soon to help these communities to address those issues. Uh, but we're delighted that our ozone plant will be in place and it will not handle the turbidity, but it should be able to handle a lot of these other uh, chemicals and toxins that may get into the water. And the finished water, uh, in terms of if there was a problem, how, how, and you had to turn off the plant, how many weeks do we have or days do we have in reserved water right now? So our, uh, our main reservoir, Franzen Reservoir in Turner, holds 95 million gallons. Uh, in the winter time, we expect consumption to be between 25 and 30 million gallons. Okay. So there's three to five days of water in the main reservoir. We also have in-town reservoirs 
that hold water, and we have our aquifer storage and recovery facility at Woodmancy Park. So we probably have seven to ten days. Uh, if we ended up with a shutdown, we would immediately ask for curtailment. Uh, so we would ask people to use less water okay. to, to help us uh, get through an issue. We would not foresee a turbidity issue lasting more than a few days okay. uh, as the big plume comes by. So we're hopeful that uh, even in that kind of situation, we would alert our customers, but it would be a short-lived issue. Okay, and how do people get alerted on water? We have uh, the emergency alert system that I always encourage everyone to sign up for. Okay. Uh, so you can get the, the direct notice. Uh, we will use the media okay. uh, to, uh, to alert people. So, so we'll go, unfortunately, we live in a period where uh, newspapers aren't what they used to be. Right. We've never had uh, television stations, uh, although we are getting more uh, notice from uh, from Portland stations, but uh, we use these other facilities to help us get the word out. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You, really man. appreciate it. Always happy to be here. And thanks for joining us.